We will learn from the following five aspects. 1. The impact of electrocution time. 2. Low voltage electric shock detachment from the power source. 3. High voltage electric shock detachment from the power source. 4. On site emergency first aid. 5. Handing the injured after detachment from the power source. The impact of electrocution time. The basic principle of emergency first aid is to take active measures on site to protect the life of the injured, reduce the severity of the injury, and reduce pain. According to the needs of the injury, quickly contact the medical emergency center, medical department, for treatment. The key to successful first aid is quick action and correct operations. Any delay and operational error will lead to worsening of the injury or death. Electric shock first aid should be a race against the time. Once it is clear that the heartbeat and breathing have stopped, immediately use cardiopulmonary resuscitation to perform rescue and resistantly continue. Meanwhile, early contact the medical emergency center, medical department for medical personnel to take over the treatment. Before medical personnel take over the treatment, do not abandon on-site rescue. Nor should you determine death based solely on the absence of breathing or pause and abandon rescue. Low voltage electric shock. Detachment from the power source. Electric shock first aid. First, make the electrocuted person quickly detach from the power source. The faster, the better. The longer the current acts, the more severe the injury will be. Detach from the power source means to disconnect the part that electrocuted person is in contact with all live equipment, all circuit breakers, switchers, isolators, disconnectors, or other disconnecting devices, or find a way to separate the electrocuted person from the live equipment. During the detachment, the rescuer must protect themselves. If the electric shock occurs on low voltage line, overhead line, or distribution platform, service entrance line, for those that can immediately cut off the power source, it should be quickly disconnected. The rescuer should quickly climb to a pole or climb to a safe place to take their own anti-electric shock and anti-fall safety measures. Use isolated wheel cutters with isolated handles or isolated objects, dry non-contactive objectives, or other tools to separate the electrocuted person from the power source. High voltage electric shock. Detachment from the power source. 1. Immediately notify the relevant power supply unit or user to cut off the power. 2. Wear isolated gloves, wear isolated boots, and use isolated tools of the corresponding voltage level to sequentially disconnect the power switch or fuse. 3 through a barren mental wheel to short-circuit the line, forcing the protection device to act and cut off the power. PPT-9 
on-site emergency first aid. After the electrocuted person is detached from the power source, the on-site rescuers should quickly assess the condition of the electrocuted person and perform symptomatic rescue. At the same time, try to contact the medical emergency center, medical department, for doctors to come to the site to take over the treatment. According to the condition of the electrocuted person, different situations use different first aid methods. For the electrocuted person who is conscious and aware with a heartbeat, but rapid breathing, pale complexion, or have a brief electric shock, but did not lose consciousness, should move the electrocuted person to a place with fresh air and good ventilation, to lie down, rest quietly for one to two hours, to recover slowly. If conditions are low, send to the hospital for further examination. For the electrocuted person who is unconscious and has no awareness with a heartbeat but no breathing or very weak breathing, immediately use the head tilt, shin lift mask to open the airway and perform mouth to mouth resuscitation. At this time, remember not to perform chest compressions on the electrocuted person. If artificial respiration is not performed in time, at this time, the electrocuted person will experience cardiac. If the electrocuted person is unconscious and have no awareness, and their heart has stopped beating, but has very weak breathing, immediately perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Do not assume that the weak breathing is enough and only do chest compressions because such weak breathing does not provide enough oxygen exchange required by the body. If artificial respiration is not performed in time, the person will die. If mouth-to-mouth -mouth artificial respiration and chest compressions and performed immediately, the person can be saved. If the electrocuted person's heart and breathing stop, immediately perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation without delay or interruption. For the electrocuted person and the person struck by lighting, if their heart and breathing have stopped and they have other injuries, quickly perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation and then deal with other injuries. If someone is found electrocuted on a tool or high place, perform rescue as early as possible on the tool or high place. After the electrocuted person is detached from the power source, Quickly lay the injured person on the rescue's safety belt or lie flat in suitable place. Then, according to the injured person's consciousness, breathing, and carotid pause, perform different methods of first aid. When the injured person is detached from the power source, how to deal with them? To determine if the injured person is conscious, First, gently pat the shoulder of the injured person and shout loudly, Hey, what's wrong with you? As shown in the picture. Two, if known, call their name directly. If conscious, send to the hospital immediately. Three, if the elbows are fixed and papules are dilated, with no response, immediately use fingernails to press the futurum point and the 合谷 point. 
Once initially determined that the injured person is unconscious, immediately call people around to help with the rescue. Even if no one is around, you should shout, "Help! Help!" Not, you must call for others to help, because one person performing CRP cannot sustain it for a long time, and after fatigue. The actions may become inaccurate. The person called to help should assist with CPR, and also immediately call the ambulance station or call for trained rescuers to come and help. The correct rescue position is supine position. The patient head, neck, and torso also lie flat without twisting. With hands placed beside the torso. If the injured person falls, face down, call for help while carefully turning them, so that the injured person, their entire body, moves as a whole. Pay special attention to protect the neck. One hand can support the neck, while the other hand supports the shoulder. With the span as the axis, to turn the injured person's head, neck, and torso smoothly in a straight line to a supine position on a firm surface, with limbs flat. When you find the electrocuted person breathing weakly or has stopped breathing, immediately clear the airway of the electrocuted person. For facilitating breathing, or add in rescue, clearing the airway main uses the head tilt, shin lift method for the electrocuted person. If unconscious, after opening the airway, within ten seconds, use look, listen, and feel method to determine if the injured person is breathing. One, look, look at the chest. An abdominal wall of the injured person to see if there is a breathing movement. Two, listen. By placing your ear close to the mouth and nose of the injured person to hear if there is breathing sound. Three, feel. By feeling with your face to test if there is airflow from the mouth and nose, if there are no such signs, it can be determined that there is no breathing. Once determined that there is no breathing, immediately perform two rescue breaths. When it is determined that the injured person has no breathing, immediately perform mouth to mouth. A mouth to nose rescue breathing. The rescuer takes a deep breath and holds it, then covers the injured person's mouth with their lips, covering the injured person's slightly open mouth, and blows area into the injured person's mouth. Blows area for one to one point five seconds. While carefully observing the chest. Of the injured person, for rise and fall. If there is no rise, it means that the air did not go in. After each breath, the rescuer should detach from the injured person's mouth and slightly lift their head, facing the chest of the injured person, to inhale fresh air. For the next rescue breath. At the same time, ensure the injured person's mouth is open, and the hand pinching the nose can be relaxed to allow the injured person to exhale through the nose. Observe the injured person's chest for deflation, which indicates airflow from the injured person's mouth. Note the volume of each breath. Should not be too large. 
about 600 ml. More than 1,200 ml may cause gastric distension. 2. When blowing, do not press the chest. 3. For children, the volume varies with age and should be about 500 ml or enough to make the chest rise. 4. At the beginning of the rescue, give two initial breaths, each lasting for 1 to 1.5 seconds. 5. If the injured person has a pause but no breathing, give one breath every 5 seconds, 12 breaths per minute. When checking the injured person consciousness, breathing, and airway check, the injured person pause to determine the condition of the injured person's heartbeat. Quickly determine the compression point between the nips and the sternum. Compression posture. The correct compression posture. The rescue keeps the arms straight, with shoulders above the injured person's sternum, directly above using their own weight to press vertically down. Compression rate. The compression rate should be maintained at 100 times per minute. Compression to ventilation ratio. The ratio of compression to breath is usually for S 13 to 1. For infants and children, 15 to 1. Compression depth, usually for adults, 4 to 5 cm. For children aged 5 to 13, 3 cm. For infants and young children, 2 cm. Students, electric shock first aid is a very important skill. It can also be used for drowning victims. We can also use the same cardiopulmonary resuscitation to perform rescue. If we master this skill, once we encounter a situation that requires first aid with correct math, we can save a life and save a family. But remember, the premise of saving others is to ensure your own safety. So, let's summarize the process of electric shock first aid. It includes three steps. One, detachment from the power source. Two, assessment of the injury. Three, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. That's all students for this lesson. Goodbye.